Thank you. Uh, Srivai, hello. Uh, in the last World Cup, uh, eventually you found out yourself in the winning camp. So, at the point of this tournament, where do you find in yourself? Uh. I think it's very good that you know we won the first game in our Super 12 after 15 years. Is it 2007? So I think it's fantastic. Uh, I think Bang anybody deserves it. Was this group of boys for the effort that they have put in, and you know, full credit to them. Where do you want to see yourself at the end of this World Cup? I told you this before. We want to take one game at a time. We are not thinking too far ahead. Our next challenge is Zimbabwe. Well, Sri, after the heavy defeat last match, how was the team environment and morale, and what was your message to the boys? I think the morale is very good. Uh, we realized South Africa played really well on that day. They were very strong. Riley Russo at number three gives them that sort of power that uh, is one one of the world's best at the moment. So we came across an innings from two really quality players in Quinton Decock and Riley Russo, and we'll take our learnings from that. You can go ahead now. This gentleman, here in the white shirt. I yeah. coach Zimbabwe played outstanding cricket against Pakistan. Have you seen? I think. Uh, what is the plan to de uh, destroy them in this ground? Should I tell it to you? I don't think I need to. We definitely have a plan, but I think we respect Zimbabwe, the amazing performance against Pakistan. We watched each and every ball of it, and the way they pulled it off against Pakistan is unbelievable. Full credit to them, full respect. Uh, hi, uh, Shri. Am I audible? What? Yeah. Uh, Shri, uh, the question uh, to you is like, of, of, of while teams like, uh, you know, uh, Zimbabwe, uh, com I mean, coming back to victory is a big thing for uh, cricket in general. How much of a challenge does it get? Like, you know, you're at a time and you're not in, in, in the best of position in the league table. You're suddenly finding yourself in a, in a underdog team like a Zimbabwe. How much of a challenge is it for the team? Because, you know, like you still have a long, long way to go if, in, in, to be, you know, to stay afloat in the league. You know, uh, you're talking about this tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we have to take it one game at a time. We can't look at the points table. I don't think uh, we, we can't think too far ahead, nor can we dwell on what happened. I think it's about remaining, staying really calm environment, uh, being very clear with our plans, uh, focus on our execution on that day, and uh, take one game at a time, one ball at a time, and small little phases of the game. I think if we win those small little phases, we'll definitely put up a good show. Hi, Coach. Uh, this is Mahfuz from TV Sports Bangladesh, and thanks for being here with us. Uh, so before starting the World Cup, we started so many experiments, especially in the opening pair and in also in some other sectors. So would you mind telling us about your satisfaction regarding the opening pair? How is it going on? Are you satisfied? And the other things you experimented, does this uh, all the things uh, working perfectly? I think so. I mean, you're still on the opening pair, huh? Good for you. Uh, I think it's good. Uh, we got 47 in the first game. We were 26 for no loss in two overs against South Africa. Uh, so I, the opening pair looks settled. I think it's giving them more game time, more experience, and. The more they play together, the more they play against different opposition in different conditions, they will learn. It's about kicking on and they will learn that. That's what very good players like Quinton Decock and Riley Russo do. Once they get a start, they're able to go on and make that impact that we talk about. So I think it's a learning process for both Shanto and Shomo and I think they'll do it. Uh, the gentleman here in the floral shirts and then we'll take the one from the back before we move on to the Zoom questions. Hi, Sri. A lot of expectation from you when you joined Bangladesh team a short time, uh, especially the World Cup mission. But we have not ever seen brilliant cricket, super cricket from Bangladesh team. What is the problem of uh, your team, players and others? I think what is your expectation? I think we are building a side and we're very, I think we've done really well in building this side. And the confidence of the boys, and they know where they stand in world cricket. And there is, there is reality for them. They know where they stand. They know where they want to go. I think there's absolute clarity. And I think that is the base that we can set in such a short time. I think we've set that base really well. 
I think the, it's up to you what expectations you have. But as from a team point of view, we are very clear on the expectations that we have on ourselves. We want to build this side for the future. I think we've got a good set of boys. We've got the skill sets. If we can add a couple of more skill sets here and there, I think we can build a really good T20 team for the future. Hi, coach. Against South Africa, it was a heavy defeat. So normally, what we have seen previously, after a heavy defeat, any team goes merely down. Against Zimbabwe, uh, how important it is, rather than playing in the field or performing, the mental boost up for the Bangladesh board. And what is your message to the boys before this match, after that heavy defeat against South Africa? Australia lost to New Zealand. They beat Sri Lanka the next game. What more do you want? I mean, that's an example we can take. And uh, I think... In, in a tournament play, there is no place for emotions. I think one day you can have a bad day, you can bounce back the next day really strong. And I think, and that's what the boys know. In tournament play, I think you have to put behind. Whether you win massively or you lose massively, it's gone. I think the next day you wake up, train, travel and play. So I think nothing changes from our side. We still know what our plans are. We still train as hard as we can. We had a, uh, we had a travel to deal with. So I think we are ready for the next game. Thank you very much. We'll take one more question from this um, physical audience here and then we'll move on. So if you have questions, those who are attending via Zoom, please raise your hands now. So we'll start the process after this question has been answered. Uh, coach, in the last two games, we got a very good start, especially in uh, batting, bowling in both departments. But we cannot continue. What's going wrong and what's your expectations uh, for the next match is that if we get a very good start, how we have to carry it? I think we've spoken about it. We've spoken mm -hmm. about it. The boys know that I think two different uh, scenarios. In the first game, we were batting first. We had a good start. I think Shakib was a bit unlucky not to clear the fence. So these things happen. And in the last game, we were chasing a massive score. And the scoreboard pressure was too much on the boys. So they know it. And I think it's about, again, as I said, dissect the game into small little parts, win small little moments in the game, win, win the next two, three overs. And I think take it from there. And that's how the boys will learn. Good decisions for longer. Thank you very much. We'll shift to the Zoom platform now. And Mohammed Issam, your hand is up first. So you can go ahead and ask your question. Where is he? He's online, so you'll hear the question via the speakers. Uh, just wanted to know how you uh, assessed how they bowled in the last match in, in terms of the last five overs where they went for 29. Yep. Uh, how different it was from the first 15 overs. And uh, I'm sure you have, you have assessed that and you have also addressed it with the bowlers. Um, so what would be your uh, uh, assessment of that, those five overs and how do you like tell them to maintain that in the next match, maybe. Well, it was really good, wasn't it? I mean, the changes of pace were there. They used the dimensions of the ground. They used the conditions very well, bowled into the pitch. Uh, once you get into the pitch, the ball was stopping a little bit. It was hard to clear the boundaries. But I, again, as I said, it was, that shows the quality of innings that Riley Russo played also. It wasn't easy for someone like Miller or anybody to come and go straight away. Even when India batted Rohit and Virat took their time initially before going. And so that really shows what a quality innings Riley Russo and Quinton Decock played and credit to both of them, I think. If I could ask you, um Zimbabwe is a very frequent opponent of Bangladesh. Uh, they've, they've played each other a number of times. Uh, but recently, obviously, Zimbabwe is doing quite well. Mm -hmm. uh, does, does, that, does the frequency of matches give an advantage to your, side, uh, to your players that they know what they're going to play? I would assume so. I've never been a part of a Zimbabwe Bangladesh. Uh, clash so I, I I'm, I'm not going to comment on that how frequently you play but I think the boys are well prepared they know their opposition I think knowing their opposition is one thing we really stress on we do our homework and we pride ourselves on that and I think uh, the boys know their opposition very well thank you very much Mohammed uh, we'll come thank back you. to the gentleman here with us He'll ask a question, and after him, we'll take two more before we let Coach go back to his <coughs> training session with the boys. Uh, Sripai, after losing to South Africa in the last match, uh, uh, betting coach Jamie Siddons came to the mix, John, and he said that 
the reason behind the uh, losing to South Africa was uh, batters kept trying hitting sixes as they are not the big hitters. So they should uh, change themselves. Uh, they should be smart enough. So w what is the definition of smartness here uh, to be successful? The dimensions of the ground. Uh, we've got to know it's very different to playing in the subcontinent or very different to playing even in some places like New Zealand, Australia it brings with it its own challenges. I think we said that, and we spoke about that in the first press conference about the dimensions. Some grounds are diagonally big, some grounds have side bound, big side boundaries, some have straight, uh, long boundary straight. So I think playing around with the dimensions and knowing the batter's strength, hitting pockets and hitting boundaries are very important. And I think Jamie spoken to the boys about that. And Sashan, you may ask your question. Uh, hi, <clears throat> Shubhai, one more thing is, uh, uh, you just spoke about that uh, Shakib was unlucky to not clear the fence that day. Uh, I mean, over the years we have seen that uh, the team is quite, obviously, being the captain and one of the, the you know, very senior players, he's, he's uh, you know, the team revolves around him. How much of a challenge does it get for, I mean, the players and the support staff when, 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 when your top performer is, you know, little, having a little hot and cold kind of form, so what, is, what do you make of it? He just got world number one all around, didn't he? So he's had a fantastic series in New Zealand, and he's just had two innings. So and I think it was the right shot at that time because small boundary against the leg spinner. I mean, 99 times out of 100, you would have hit that for six. So uh, and if that had gone for six, and even in the last game, he was unlucky not to review. Ball pitched outside the leg stump. So I, I mean, how, what what do you make of that? Which a great player like Shakib Al Hassan had two unlucky dismissals. I think he's up for the contest here. Okay, we have time for one more question. You can go ahead, and after this gentleman, we shall wrap up. Coach, uh, what kind of condition you are expecting in Gabba? The wicket, uh, the behavior, what are you expecting? I think uh, wicket look, looks a typical Gabba wicket. Uh, it'll have good pace, bounce and carry. Uh, maybe a little bit of initial movement early on, but I think it'll be a very good batting wicket, um, fast outfield. Uh, value for shots. The, the you get you get value for shots here. If you can time the ball uh, into pockets, uh, so it will be a good good game, a high scoring 160, 170 kind of game.